Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got another mini PC to check out. This is a fanless device running with a Cherry Trail processor, one of the new uh, low-end chips from Intel. This one is from a company called Tronsmart. Uh, we haven't looked at something from them before, but uh, I can say that this one does come with a licensed version of Windows installed, Windows 10 Home Edition, so you're not going to have any issues with uh, your Windows license when you get this. This is $150, uh, two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. So pretty much on par with other uh, low-end PCs that we've seen, but very reasonably priced and very useful. And we'll step through some of those uses in a few minutes here, but I wanted to cover the hardware first. So again, we got uh, the Atom X5 Cherry Trail processor under the hood, uh, two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, USB 2.0 in the front here, a headphone microphone jack here, a power port over there. Uh, on the back, we've got power, uh, Ethernet, but it is only 100 megabit Ethernet, not gigabit. So if you're pushing a lot of files to uh, NAS devices or trying to use this as a file server, it's going to be rather slow because of that uh, limitation on there. Uh, there is Wi-Fi built in, wireless N, uh, but it does cover both the 5 gigahertz and 2 gigahertz frequencies. If you'd like to know more about wireless, you can check out uh, my Wireless 101 video above for more information on that. Uh, HDMI out for plugging it into a monitor. It will also uh, carry audio as well. Uh, and you have your USB 3.0 port and a micro SD card slot to augment its onboard storage. So you can get you know, one of those new 128 gig cards uh, and pop it in there and have yourself some extra storage. So a uh, pretty nice little device overall, a uh, very lightweight, no fan, uh, very low power also. And what we're gonna do now is plug it in and see how it performs. All right, let's see how quickly this device can boot up. We're gonna hit the power button here and we'll get a little light on the top to indicate uh, when we are on or off. And we'll let the uh, splash screen take effect here. I do have a wireless keyboard and mouse combo device from Logitech that I've been using lately. So that is what's plugged into the front here. And uh, there we go. So boot time's consistent pretty much with what I have seen uh, on other low end devices. So I'm just gonna log in right now. We're gonna start with our web browsing test. All right, let's go and uh, hit up maybe the New York Times first. So we'll load up the Edge browser and uh, go visit the New York Times website. And uh, there you go, it does render pretty quickly initially. We do get hit with all of those ads and other scripts that run on the page initially. So that does uh, tend to give you a little bit of lag, not uncommon for this class of device. If you've ever browsed the web on a tablet, uh, you've probably experienced a similar uh, little bit of lag when you first get on the uh, page here. But uh, as you can see, the pages do render relatively quickly and you are able to uh, start reading pretty fast once you get on page. And on the Octane benchmark test, the Transmart X5 comes in at 6,966 running Google Chrome. Uh, that puts it just a little bit higher than the Intel Compute Stick running with the prior generation Intel processor, but surprisingly a little bit below uh, what we saw with the MegoPad T04, which is a very similar device uh, running with the same chip. Uh, but let's go and take a look at my uh, YouTube channel now and see how fast it can do web video. We are going to talk a little bit more about uh, home theater performance in a little bit with Cody. Uh, but here we go. We've got my YouTube channel popping up here. I do have an autoplay video that runs to non-subscribers, which is this one here. And this is running at uh, 1080 right now. So you can see how uh, everything looks there. So nice and smooth. The, the uh, color looks pretty good on my screen here, of course, because that is determined on your monitor. But uh, we'll look at the uh, stats for nerds and we're getting uh, no drop frames here, it looks like. So things seem to be working pretty well on the YouTube front also. So not too bad there. Uh, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is Microsoft Word. So we've got Microsoft Word loaded up here with our newsletter template. I like to use this one because this is kind of the extreme example of what somebody might do in Microsoft Word. Uh, but as you can see, as we're scrolling through the document here, it does render pretty quickly, a little bit faster maybe than uh, we saw on some of those Intel compute sticks and other devices running with the prior generation of Intel hardware. Uh, not a huge noticeable difference, but uh, in both instances, the, it is very usable uh, to use Microsoft Word, even with a template this intense. Uh, over the course of your work. So as you can see, as we resize this image here and move it around, uh, the text does reflow very quickly. We can uh, go in and start typing a little bit here and uh, it does seem to keep up pretty quickly with my key presses on there. So not bad for getting work done, but the big question I know a lot of you have is what about the gaming performance? So we're gonna look at Minecraft now. So Minecraft seems to run pretty well. This is the Java-based version of Minecraft. This is the one that most people are still running. So if you're buying this computer for somebody else, this is likely the version of Minecraft they are playing. Uh, we are seeing a nice performance increase over the Bay Trail chips, the prior generation Intel chips. I'm seeing uh, right now about 40 frames per second or so. It dips down into the uh, 30 to 20s when you get into more complicated scenes or when there's a lot of stuff getting drawn in. But it has been a very consistent Minecraft performance and actually pretty enjoyable to play. So I think uh, you're gonna have some uh, good 
Minecraft experience here. I am running with the OptiFine plugin, which gives us a little bit of a performance boost uh, over just uh, running Minecraft uh, from the basic installation, but I haven't touched any of the other settings because I like to do uh, real apples to apples comparison here. So we are seeing the benefit uh, of the graphics performance improvements with the new uh, Intel Atom chipset. However, uh, you're still not going to get there on some of the AAA games. So this is a benchmark result uh, from 3D Mark called CloudGate, and this is kind of replicating a higher end uh, PC game. So you can see that we're getting very low frame rates, about eight and a quarter frames per second, uh, but that is significantly improved over the prior generation Intel chip. So at the bottom, you see that Pavilion X2 running with uh, last year's Atom chip, and that's only getting five frames per second. So there are uh, some performance performance boosts here on the graphics side that are uh, visible uh, in Minecraft here, maybe not so visible on other tests, but we are having an improvement. A lot of that performance though is going into driving larger displays. So what I did is hooked it up to my 4K television earlier. I was able to play back some 4K movies via YouTube, a little sluggish occasionally to get started, but once it got enough of the uh, video streamed up, it seemed to run okay. However, it does not output at 60 hertz. It looks like it can only get 30 hertz uh, out at 4K with this device. So that will limit you a little bit uh, in some of the frame rates you might see, but really it's gonna be hard to drive 60 frames per second uh, out of a PC like this. Now let's take a look at playing back some movies though in 1080, and we're gonna look at uh, Kodi running with some Blu-ray MKV files. All right, we got Kodi loaded up here. We're gonna take a look at a Blu-ray MKV file. Now Blu-ray MKVs are uh, the actual video files from a Blu-ray disc untouched. So I basically took that uh, movie off a disc that I own, stored it on a NAS device in the basement so I don't have to keep you know, fuddling around with discs in the house here and I can click on uh, any of my favorite movies anytime I want right here in my house. So we're streaming what's probably about a 25 or 30 gigabyte file over my network, uh, over the ethernet right now to the Transmart here. And as you can see, things are loading up and playing uh, very smoothly. I can skip ahead a little bit in the video here uh, and everything seems to be working quite well. So we've got a good example here of the networking uh, getting pushed a little bit as well as the processor and uh, display. And this movie at 1080p is running back just fine. So I think from that standpoint, uh, it should play back very nicely. The one issue that I ran into though, you'll notice down here that it says it supports uh, DTS HD. Now the Kodi uh, software does, however, the output through the HDMI does not. And they uh, did list on their list of specifications that it does support uh, outputting those higher end audio formats. So if you're just using uh, DTS and Dolby Digital, if you're a home theater person, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, those two formats are fine. The lossless formats like DTS HD and Dolby True HD uh, do not work through this, just like they don't on any other uh, little Intel-based computer like this one. So you're not gonna get that. Uh, it does support the 24 frames per second modes that a lot of home theater people wanna have, so it does do that. So you might need an external audio device of some kind uh, to get those other formats in there. But I've been really pleased with the performance on it. It's, it's actually noticeable, at least in its spin-up, versus uh, some of the Bay Trail devices. So again, I think we're seeing the benefit of some of that uh, video hardware working its way into this thing. So I could definitely recommend this device. What's nice about this, first of all, is the price. $150 gets you a pretty functional PC, as you can see here, uh, that can run all the stuff that uh, most people might run on their PC. So I was pretty pleased with uh, that overall, at least as far as its performance is concerned. I was most happy with the fact that uh, they uh, di they give you a real version of Windows that's licensed and activated, unlike a lot of uh, some, some of these other PCs you might find from some of these places overseas. Uh, this one is legit. Uh, so you're gonna get a full licensed version of Windows with a fully functional computer for $150. Uh, seems to perform very well for all the basic computing tasks that we typically look for in a device like this and uh, very quiet as it is fanless. And I've been pretty pleased with its overall performance over the last couple of days testing it. Uh, if you wanna buy one, I've got an affiliate link down below. You can go to lon.tv slash arax5, A-R-A-X-5, uh, to get taken right over to that site. You'll buy it from the same place that I bought it from. I actually paid for this, so you can uh, buy with confidence. It did show up uh, when they said it would, and I had no uh, issues buying it there, so check it out, and every uh, purchase does help the channel a little bit. So that will do it for the Transmart Aura X5, and this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.